This review was prepared by Anuja Shukla, Anuvav Mishra and Yogesh K. Dwavedi and published by TheoryHub. TheoryHub covers a wide range of theories and act as a starting point for theory exploration in different research and teaching and learning contexts. This is a review of the expectation confirmation theory. Expectation confirmation theory explains how individuals post-purchase satisfaction and repurchase intentions depend on the pre-purchase expectations and subsequent experiences with products or services. The expectation confirmation theory originated from the research domains of consumer research and social psychology. The theory was first introduced in marketing to study consumer satisfaction and consumers' decision-making processes. Since its inception, the marketing literature has consistently highlighted the critical role of consumer satisfaction, which further affects repurchases, consumer loyalty, and consumer retention. The foundation for the concept of satisfaction was derived from applied psychology research related to life and employment satisfaction. For example, individuals set an initial standard of expectations, and any deviation from the initial reference point affects their satisfaction levels. Similarly, consumers have basic needs and certain expectations from products to fulfill their needs. When the product fails to meet consumers' expectations, this results in consumers' unfavorable attitudes and beliefs about the product. The disconfirmation concept is aligned with cognitive dissonance theory, which suggests that individuals experience a psychological conflict when their behavior is not consistent with their beliefs and thoughts. For example, users may believe that a certain technology is easy to use, but find it complex during the actual usage. In such a case, users need to realign their attitudes toward that technology to resolve the discrepancy, leading to disconfirmation. If the behavior and thoughts are aligned, consumers do not need to change attitude and hence no dissonance exists. Similarly, expectation confirmation theory offered insights into the cognitive post-purchase consequences of satisfaction and attitude. Expectation confirmation theory utilized the Howard and Sheth model of consumer satisfaction to propose that disconfirmation stems from the comparison between anticipated satisfaction and received satisfaction. Contrary to the popular belief that a superior quality product results in higher consumer satisfaction, even a relatively inferior quality product can successfully meet consumers' expectations, leading to acceptable levels of consumer satisfaction. Hence, the theory highlights how expectations prior to purchase and post-purchase experiences shape consumer satisfaction. Another important objective of expectation confirmation theory was to offer guidance to marketers in retaining consumers, as the cost of acquiring new customers was substantially higher than retaining them. Expectation confirmation theory demonstrates that consumer satisfaction is fueled by belief, disbelief generated as an outcome of the evaluation of the performance against the expectation. The conceptual underpinning of expectation confirmation theory can be explained in the following steps. Formation of expectation, interaction and experience, confirmation or disconfirmation, and cognitive adjustment. These steps explain why consumers purchase again. Formation of expectations. Consumers form initial expectations about a specific product or service prior to purchase based on knowledge and prior experience. This knowledge is acquired through various mass media communication channels, peers, and influencers. Mass media acts as a critical source of product information and knowledge for consumers, who form expectations based on advertising, media reports, and other forms of media exposure. In addition, direct channels like personal selling, opinion leaders, peers, and influencers influence consumers' knowledge and expectations about the products. If consumers have access to accurate product information, they form realistic expectations. However, if the information is misleading, it leads to unrealistic expectations. Interaction and experience Consumers purchase and use the product after carefully considering the information. 
Once the consumers use the product, they form perceptions about its performance. Confirmation or disconfirmation. Consumers assess the perceived performance of the product based on their initial expectations. There could be three possibilities that can lead to disconfirmation. Firstly, perceived product performance greater than expectations equals positive disconfirmation. Secondly, perceived product performance less than expectation equals negative disconfirmation. And finally, perceived product performance equals expectation equals simple confirmation. Cognitive adjustment. Based on the confirmation of their expectations, consumers form a level of satisfaction. Positive disconfirmation and simple confirmation strengthen consumers' attitudes toward the product, leading to a sense of satisfaction. In the case of negative disconfirmation, consumers develop an unfavorable attitude toward the product, generating dissatisfaction. Consumers satisfied with the performance of the products are more likely to repurchase products compared to dissatisfied consumers. In some specific cases, even dissatisfied consumers are forced to repurchase products, due to the absence of any other feasible alternative or high switching costs. Similarly, all satisfied consumers may not repurchase the same products, because of intrinsic factors such as variety-seeking behavior, a need for uniqueness, or innovativeness. When it comes to extensions of the theory, expectation disconfirmation theory is an alternate version of expectation confirmation theory, which replaces confirmation with disconfirmation. Consumers compare the product performance with pre-purchase expectations in the post-purchase stage, creating disconfirmation perceptions. The combination of these perceptions and the deviation from the expected satisfaction levels affects consumers' satisfaction, dissatisfaction. Oliver discussed two models of EDT. The first simplified expectation disconfirmation model consists of three main constructs, expectations, disconfirmation, and satisfaction. Higher initial expectations will lead to more instances where performance fails to meet the higher expectations. Hence, expectations are more likely to have a negative relationship with disconfirmation. Expectations and disconfirmation have a positive impact on satisfaction. The second model, the complete expectation disconfirmation 1, includes performance as the fourth variable in the model. This model suggests that expectations have a positive effect on performance. In addition, if the product performance is high, it is more likely to exceed the initial expectations, leading to a positive disconfirmation. Hence, performance has a positive influence on disconfirmation and satisfaction. While comparing the two models, the simplified model is parsimonious, and the second complete model performs better in explaining the variations in satisfaction. The complete model also highlights the assimilation effects and asymmetric effects missing in the simplified model. Assimilation effects reflect how consumers balance their expectations and perceptions of product performance. For example, consumers may rely more on initial expectations than performance to form satisfaction, as it is difficult to evaluate the performance of complex technologies. Asymmetric effects indicate the distinct impact of positive and negative perceptions, where negative experiences have a relatively higher impact on satisfaction. In an information systems context, the user follows a similar decision journey leading to continuance, acceptance. The expectation confirmation model is one of the most well-known and extensively used models extended from ECT. ECM replaced the repurchase intention variable in expectation confirmation theory with information systems continuance intention to suit the research context. ECM defined confirmation as the congruence between expectation and actual performance, and removed the performance construct of ECT because ECM assumes that the influence of perceived performance is already explained by confirmation. The model predominantly focused on the post-usage or post-acceptance variables to explain usage continuance. The effects of pre-acceptance variables are already manifested in the constructs of confirmation and satisfaction. In addition, the construct of perceived usefulness from the technology acceptance model was introduced to reflect the post-acceptance expectations. 
According to ECM, users' intention to continue information systems usage depends on three factors. Users' satisfaction with is, the degree of users' confirmation of their expectations, and the post-usage perceived usefulness of is. The perceived usefulness shows users' cognitive belief, and satisfaction reflects users' affect. Satisfaction has a stronger effect on information systems' continuance than perceived usefulness. The continuance is predominantly determined by users' satisfaction with initial use. Unpleasant experiences and dissatisfaction arising from performance negatively influence users' further use of such services or websites. Hence, satisfaction, an effective component of human behavior, has a significant positive association with continuance. Initial expectations and confirmation of those expectations after the first use are two important antecedents to satisfaction. As noted earlier, expectations are at the baseline, which acts as an anchor for the further evaluation of the system. The confirmation is evaluated based on the gap between the actual performance and initial expectations. A positive confirmation suggests that users have reaped the expected benefits, whereas a negative confirmation suggests that the product or service has failed to meet users' expected levels of performance. Therefore, users' confirmation has a positive impact on their satisfaction with usage. The perceived performance was operationalized as post-perceived usefulness in ECM. Research on information systems continuance showed that the impact of perceived ease of use on attitude and behavioral intentions gradually declined from the pre-acceptance to post-acceptance stages. As users became familiar with IS, they became more concerned with the performance and benefits obtained from IS. Hence, users' perceived usefulness of IS was expected to significantly predict their post-acceptance satisfaction. Also, when users can improve their performance and productivity with the help of IS, they are intrinsically motivated to use information systems to seek potential rewards. Consequently, perceived usefulness has a positive influence on users' is continuance. Finally, to understand the relationship between perceived usefulness and confirmation, the ECM took cues from the TAM model, where the cognitive beliefs in information systems acceptance were related. However, the post-usage perceived usefulness was somehow mixed and confused with the much more popular pre-usage perceived usefulness featured in TAM. To avoid this confusion, in an extension of ECM, perceived usefulness was replaced by post-usage usefulness. This updated model also incorporated two additional variables, users' IT self-efficacy to reflect their confidence in their skills and abilities to perform the tasks, and facilitating conditions to enable users to access and use is. In this model, the authors propose that the association between perceived usefulness and satisfaction can be removed without any significant impact on the variance explained in satisfaction. In another extension, ECM was combined with the unified theory of acceptance and use of technology framework to investigate users' post-adoption behavior toward mobile payment systems. The integrated model, with two additional variables of trust and perceived security, displayed a higher predictive power to explain users' continuance of mobile payments. Scholars have also integrated expectation confirmation theory with other theories, such as TAM and the theory of planned behavior, to measure user satisfaction and its impact on information systems continuance. Expectation confirmation theory and TAM were used to examine the usage and acceptance of online learning platforms to enhance educational technology acceptance and its utilization among students. Similarly, expectation confirmation theory and TAM were integrated to predict blog continuance intentions, and the expectation confirmation theory model of is continuance performed better than the TAM. In another study, constructs from expectation confirmation theory and TPB were used to investigate the antecedents to users' continuance intention of using online shopping. The findings indicated that users' prior experience and satisfaction with online shopping significantly positively impacted their continuance intentions of online shopping. The research findings from integrated models suggest that ECM can be used in conjunction with other information systems models like TAM and UTAUT to investigate users' post-adoption behavior. In most cases, the integrated models with additional context-specific variables perform better, 
with improved predictive power. Thank you for listening. To download the full review or to read other theory reviews visit open.ncl.ac.uk.